Grab your favorite cozy beverage and kick back, because today we're going thrifting. Hey, it's Jess. I live in New York City, and today I'm taking you along for a three-day thrift and vintage adventure around the city. We're seeing the fabulous, the funky, and a few things in between. And at the end, of course, I gotta give you a haul of what I picked up. Are you excited yet? Good morning! I thought where better to start a thrift with me in the Upper East Side than one of the most iconic locations in the Upper East Side, the Met. I feel like fall kind of just came out of nowhere. It was in the 70s for quite a bit of time and then almost just overnight it was 50 and it just finally feels like fall. I was initially thinking that the next video you guys saw of me was going to be a vlog where I shared that I chopped my hair but no I think this is gonna be first. So hey I chopped my hair off. I decided to grab a mid but overpriced coffee because I really just wanted a spot to sit. Here we are $17 down. Today we are going thrifting. This is my first thrifting video in New York City. Don't forget to give this video a like. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already and comment something because it helped Help me pay off my, my $20 table charge. First place we're headed is 90th and 2nd, and I... <laughs> First stop is Housing Works in the Upper East Side. This place is a local chain with locations speckled around the city that features a semi-curated selection. Now let me tell you, I went here on a Wednesday, and when I say it was packed, that is by no means an understatement. Starting off in women's outerwear, we're kind of just scanning for gems. I came across this green jacket and thought, hey, this seems really fun. But you guys, you guys, it was a Talbot's jacket priced at $50. And here's the kicker. It was fully synthetic at 100% polyester. That's a buy from me. that was a dud. That place was so pricey for no good reason. It was also so busy. The kind of busy where while you're looking through a rack, someone comes up to your rack and starts looking in front of you on your own rack because everybody else is everywhere else. Just a block down was our next spot, Upper East Side Thrift, great SEO. This spot was robust to say the least. Chaotic in a different way, but chaotic nonetheless. Now there were several more gems tucked in here. Quite a few blazers, outerwear pieces, and skirt suit sets were hidden in the racks. Prices were also quite a bit more fair with the condition and quality of things seeming fairly solid. final stop of day one. We're gonna go a few blocks further down. Now in my experience, a rack outside always gives me hope. There's just something about an under $5 hook that just sends the vibe that good thrift prices are ahead. First rack, instant confirmation. Off the bat, I came across several things that I really like that I typically would have gotten had I not already owned something similar. The hidden gem ratio was quite high in this spot. Take a look at this. I came across this stunning black vintage fur coat from Benmore, New York. Gorgeous condition, such a lovely piece. Then a few hangers down, I spotted a vintage Bill Blast wool coat. Details on this were quite lovely with ornate gold buttons, a red satin lining, and a black velvet collar. Now don't get me wrong, this store had gems for days, but like the last Last two was also fairly chaotic. It was definitely a very tight store with lots and lots tucked in. So definitely prepare your brain in advance, but some really great finds sprinkled in. Nothing was quite what I was looking for. Or ending day one, kind of striking out. 
through three not great the last one was definitely the best one both in terms of selection and price wise most of the median prices ranged from 9 to 15. i think this has now officially become a multi-day thrift honestly i'm kind of excited because i think this is going to require us to go bop around the city so i think what we'll wrap is with a montage Hello guys, welcome to day two of thrifting around the city. My husband and I are departing. We just had lunch together after going to the DMV. It's been a very busy morning and now we're gonna go thrifting. First up, we're gonna head to this really cool spot in Chinatown. Have so much fun. Oh. I'm getting my Uber. Okay. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. See you later. We need to hop into the F track. the bathroom and oh my gosh look at how incredible this is with all the mirrors this is so cool hey this, this jacket is wool and it's so warm but let's try on all the jackets shout out to the octo buddy <laughs> this first thing i'm really excited to try on because it is a vintage rain cloak unfortunately this is looking too big it's not the right size Man, I was really hoping it would work out because I have been wanting to find a cloak or a cape for years, thrifting or vintage shopping, but alas, it's not quite my size. Oh, wait. <laughs> this is really cute. I love the length. I love the sleeve length. I really like this. I will be thinking about this a lot. Okay, we are already off to such a much better start than the other day. This first place that I went, I am in love with Mothership Thrift. The owner, whose name is Jane, is so sweet, so kind. She's very nicely just let me run around the store and film. I happened to come at a very not busy time, so I kind of just had semi-free reign. The curation was immaculate and her prices were so fair and I really love what I got.
Our first stop right at the elevator is Janky Vintage. This spot had a great mix of Y2K, so many fun blouses with prints and patterns and sequins, just lots of fun tops. bottoms they had were equally as fun and funky as well. This place had the coolest, funkiest finds, but nothing quite here for me, so on to the next shop. Now we're heading into James Floria. This place is very popular. Hunter Schaefer actually did a Vogue styling video here a couple months ago. I love her. Honestly, this place had such an amazing curated selection. There were so many fabulous archival pieces. I can totally see why a celebrity stylist would come here to pull pieces for their client. Cause we were seeing Gucci, we were seeing Dior, we were seeing Alaya. Like look at this red suit from Mugler. It's so pretty. I love this coat from Prada. I thought it was so gorgeous. Something I've been on the hunt for for years and I am determined to make it a reality is to find that coat that Cameron Diaz wears in the holiday. Honestly, any of the clothes she wears in the holiday, but there is one coat in particular, 2004 or 2006 Dior. I would love to find that piece. Someday I will. I know it, I feel it in my bones. Now, while there were lots of cool things in here, everything was just you know, out of the budget I wanted to spend for today. So we're heading out and going to Smirk next. Now bringing it back to the holiday because that is seriously one of my favorite movies. Both of these coats in different ways were like cousins of the coat that I'm looking for. I really like the one in the front. I thought it seemed so cozy and cute. And then the one in the back reminded me of a Reese's peanut butter cup. This spot had like a dark academia vibe to it, but with a twist. So we're getting that preppy style, but make it a little bit funky. We had a lot of cozy pieces, a lot of good outerwear. There were some really fun designer bags up on the wall and some fabulous shoes up front. And then while I was perusing through the racks, I came across this vintage London fog coat. And while the Burberry coat was not my size, the London London Fog one was. So of course I had to try it on. And you guys, I really loved it. I know it doesn't show on my face, but I always try to be really subdued when I'm in a shop because I'm not trying to be above and beyond, but I was really loving this coat. Next, we're popping into Loser Baby Vintage. In this shop, we had a nice mix of designer and not designer with so many great fabrics and materials in the mix. I love this cheeky tee. If I was a rad tech, I would absolutely get this. I love this robin egg leather jacket. It was so cute. There were so many cool jackets and outerwear pieces in this spot. And then I came across a suede outerwear piece that immediately drew me in. Now, while the last outerwear pieces were not my style, this absolutely was. This is 100% my style. Like, look at the jacket I'm wearing and look at its silhouette. Now look at this piece and its silhouette. Look at the cut. It's the same thing in different fonts, different materials. One thing about me is I may have fun with my styles and the colors I wear, the prints, the patterns, the fabrics, but I will always stick to my favorite silhouettes. And for our final vintage shop of the day, we're going into reservations only that two other people on the floor recommended that I had to go to. And when I walked in, I knew exactly why. This place is like if Sex in the City's wardrobe closet came to life. So well curated, so fabulous. Back in the day, I think Patricia Field would have had a field day with this. Oh no, the cringe hurt around the city. Like I could totally see Samantha wearing both this jacket and this one. And then these boots also in line with my Cameron Diaz, Amanda Woods in the holiday aesthetic. I just love these. Final special shout out from this store are these vintage Mew Mew heels with the pasta. The owner of the shop, Olivia, also just the sweetest ever. She seriously has such a great eye for curation. Oh my gosh, today is thrifting day, or I should say vintage shopping rather. It was so, so much fun. And especially it made it so much easier that all of those vintage shops were in one spot. So I could just go ba 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 and check out all of them. And it was really cool because all of them had different styles, things that they carry. So you've got such a good variety despite being just in one spot. Nice little small businesses and most places were actively being run by their owners. So I got to chat with the owners. 10 out of 10 thrifting day. I stopped and got some pastries. Now I'm heading through Little Italy to go grab a taxi and head home. Great day. We're doing a day three. We're going to one final thrift store today. And this one is in Chelsea, which I'm really excited about because I've had this place saved 
for a cool minute. But before we go there, I'm going to stop by this event I got invited to. It's a Disney Villains book event. How perfect of an event to get invited to. We know I love reading, we know I love books, we know I love spooky, and we know I love Disney. Like the perfect culmination of things to get invited to. So I'm gonna head there first and then the thrift store is only like an 11 minute walk. So I was like, meant to be. I'm gonna finish my coffee and then we're gonna head out. I'm heading out of the Disney books event. It was really neat. We got to try their new collaboration lattes, which this one is a non-caffeine latte. It's ube and lavender, which is really, really good. It had Maleficent on top with like an ube powder. Very delicious. It was really neat. I'm glad I stopped by. I met some nice people. And now we're headed to our first and only thrift store of the day. I think it's called City Opera Thrift. And it looks like as part of the commute, we are taking the High Line. Straight off the bat, I love this thrift store. This to me felt familiar. This was a thrift store at its heart. They have quite a bit of home stuff right when you walk in as well as just up the steps in this little room. Such fair prices. This coral chair, so pretty, genuinely looks like it's never been used, $100. If I did not already own a pink accent chair, I would have swooped this up. And then plates were like $3, amazing. into the fitting room. What a fabulous day. Had a tried and true fitting room. Honestly, this felt like the old days of when I used to do thrifting videos. We'd have our whole fitting room montages. Fun times. I like this Calvin Klein cashmere top, but for me, the neckline was just too deep. I would have liked it if it was about an inch, inch and a half higher. Then I thought this red sweater was going to be my Meg Ryan fall moment. And then it just wasn't quite that. This sweater was totally Rory Gilmore vibes in season one. I just had to try it on. For the sake of that and fall vibes, I liked it, but I didn't know if I loved it. And I was very on the fence. This skirt length on my height was not doing me any favors. And especially with my newly developed calf muscles since moving to New York, especially with the loafers and socks, this had me looking like the lad from Berries and Cream. Nothing about this was meant for me. I loved these pants. They did not love me. I also love these pants, but they also did not love me. The pleating with the leg style on my body just resulted in some big diaper energy. Toward the back of the store, they had some fabulous things tucked up by the cash register. So many gorgeous coats, bags, and shoes. So lovely to browse through. Very successful trip. Just like the experience. Ooh, wait. Let's just look at the window. Those are so cute. Anyways, very cool thrifting experience. I really like that place. I loved that I could try things on. Just so organized and easy to navigate. The cashmere, fairly priced. The vintage designer, fairly priced. It felt like a thrift store, but it felt like a curated thrift store. There were quite a few more affordable things if you weren't looking for either like cashmere or vintage designer. So for example, Gap jeans, $15. Unbranded sweaters, $10, $15. The plates, $3, $5. So they definitely were tucked in through there, but I, I appreciated the curation. I thought that was a really neat thing. And you still feel like you got the experience of thrifting, but definitely not necessarily the chaos that sometimes comes with thrifting. I actually think before I head home, I wanna stop and get some food somewhere because I'm quite hungry. So let's see what we've got. I see this place across the street. That's a wrap on the thrifting. We're gonna head home now. We're gonna do some laundry so I can do the haul. 
got so many of the things that were either on my wish list or like next door neighbors to my wish list. As you guys know, I've definitely reduced on thrifting in the last year, year and a half, just because I felt like when I was doing regular thrifting videos every month, sometimes twice or three times a month, I was getting a lot of things without intentionality. So now when I do go thrifting, I really want them to really serve a purpose in my wardrobe or my home. I'm just so excited about what I got. I really, really love what I found and I'm really excited to wear them and style them for fall and into winter. As you guys saw, we went all over the city. We went to a mix of thrift stores and vintage stores. For this video, I just kept it to Manhattan. I know there are so many amazing places in Brooklyn and in Queens that I've been recommended either from you guys or from some of the lovely shop owners that I got to chat with. Again, I will have all of their shops in the description box. Please, please check them out if you ever get the chance to because the people who own them are so lovely and their selection was so good. And then I'll also link some of the other places that I have saved for next time. This whole thrifting and vintage shopping in New York City will definitely be an ongoing series. So definitely be keeping an eye out for that. But I will say, and this is a you heard it here first, I will be doing another thrifting video relatively soon, before the end of the year, because I'm gonna go thrifting specifically only for home decor. And I found this really, really cool home decor place that's in Long Island City. Continue the process of slow furnishing the last 10% of decor in my apartment. Those are the updates. That's the chit chat. I'm sure you guys are like, girl, just get on with the haul. Heard, jumping in now. We're gonna do home decor first. I have two pieces. These were picked up at the first place, Mothership Thrift. The first thing is a ceramic figurine. I saw this and I loved it so much. I love a touch of whimsy and fun in my home. Animal motifs all around my home. I love frogs. I have rabbits. I have cats. I just think it's fun. I think it's cute. So when I saw this, I immediately was like, Yep, you're coming home with me. Next, we've got an art piece. And the owner kindly wrapped this for me so it would stay nice and safe while I continued shopping. But what I picked up is this gorgeous green and yellow floral painting. This is actually a legit painting, not just a print. And I love when art just already comes in the frame. It's just so beautiful. It feels so cozy. This is just gonna fit so nicely into the rest of my decor in my apartment. We've got this fabulous light tan corduroy jacket over a shirt somewhere right in between. I think this is a really nice third piece. On a crispier or breezier day, this is the perfect kind of thing to just throw on, but it's also not too warm to wear. You're sweating on the subway and you're like, oh my gosh, why did I wear this? Now, one thing I am a huge fan of is lightweight layering. With good natural fibers that actually keep you warm, but don't leave you looking bulky and like the Michelin man. And I really wanna build up my collection for the upcoming winter. This will be my first full winter here in New York City. And I really don't wanna be underprepared. I really want a good range of things that I can reach for, that I can style. So I was so excited when I found this navy Ralph Lauren cashmere turtleneck. This is such a lovely piece. It is quite warm. Even just laying it upon my hand, I'm like, yep, this is definitely going to help me retain heat. Next, we have a little gift for my husband. This is kind of like a corally orange, 100% cotton, new at tags, Banana Republic sweater. We've also started prepping my husband's wardrobe and we have recently gotten him some wool and merino sweaters, but my husband tends to run hot. So on days where it's not like cold, cold, he's like, these sweaters are too hot to wear on just a crispy day. So I was really trying to find a nice long sleeve option that was better than a t-shirt or a short sleeve button up, which is what he usually wears. And then I came across this and it was the perfect kind of piece. Returning to the mothership, we've got this leather trench coat that I tried on. I absolutely love it. I would say that this color is most similar to like maybe sienna in the crayola crayon box i love the fit of this piece i love how the leather sits on the body and i was really really excited to find it i think the main thing that's i would say off about this is that the belt has had some hardship in life but i will say I kind of liked it unbelted better than I liked it belted. So this may actually lead well in my favor because I can just wear this without the belt. Next up, we've got some utterly stunning suede pieces. They're each from different spots, but in the same building. So if you wanna go visit, you can just like have a whole little afternoon there. Suede piece number one is this sleeveless brown suede top. It buttons at the front and has a lace tie detailing. And I think one of my favorite little details about this is that there's 
almost these mini darts along the bottom midsection of the top. This is gonna give additional structure. Because leather is such a thick, heavy fabric, it's going to just very much drape as the fabric wants to lay. So by having these little darts, it's going to allow the fabric to kind of fit more with a body silhouette versus just hanging straight down with the fabric's weight. Really excited to style it, especially on some of these warmer fall days that are popping up here in New York. Our second suede piece is just absolute perfection. This is also a blend of like a jacket and an overshirt. And you guys, this is like a dream kind of piece for me, a dream find, because I love like a little over shirt. I love having a t-shirt or a long sleeve and then just throwing something that's medium lightweight over top. I have a lot of outerwear that's warm, that's thick, that's hefty and more heavy duty. Or if it's lightweight, it's long line. But I have very few and far between lightweight short hem pieces that are not denim jackets. I feel like denim jackets just have a very specific look. This is a really nice blend of something that can be dressed up, but it can be dressed down. We've got this stunning beige vintage London Fog trench coat. This is just such a beautiful piece. You guys saw me try this on in the store. I just fell in love with it. I thought it was just such a beautiful piece. The style of this is truly vintage trench coat. It's so perfect. I love the epaulettes. If you guys remember, I posted a video earlier this year talking about epaulettes. Basically, these are details most often on trench coats where you can unbutton them, put your bag, put your tote bag on, rebutton it. So that way your bag or your tote bag is not constantly sliding off when you're wearing your trench coat. I love the buckle detail on the sleeves. I love this button down lapel. So you can adjust the look your trench coat has and adjust that neckline. I love the lining and I love the big deep pockets. So overall, I'm so happy with this find. I think it's such a gorgeous vintage coat. Winding down with clothes and then we've got a couple accessories. These vintage brown wool trousers. I think these are so cool. My favorite feature about these more than just any other trouser is the fact that they have an adjustable waist. They have these little tabs in the back that you can adjust to be tighter or looser. You pull the tab and you adjust it to whichever button is the best fit for them. I just love this because this is the kind of detail that is not present really on clothes anymore that makes clothes last longer in your wardrobe and makes them work more for you. This is something I talked about recently in my petite style tips video. The idea that your body changes over time and your clothes are meant to fit you, not you meant to fit your clothes. This is something that's made with intention to ensure that the person wearing their clothes gets more use out of their clothes and that the clothes are going to fit them, not them fitting the clothes. And I really love that detail. I think that's so neat. And beyond my fawning over the design detail, I also just think these are a really nice classic kind of thing to have in your wardrobe. Final two things, we've got two accessories. One is a little one and one is a big one. Starting with the little one, we've got a dainty gold watch. This is just such a pretty piece. It just looks so lovely on. I love the stretch wristband. I love the dainty face. And now we just cross our fingers that it works. I have to take it to a watch battery replacement person, fingers crossed that it still works. And the final piece of this haul is a bag. Are we surprised? No, I love a good purse. I love a good bag. And this red leather shoulder bag was just so gorgeous. I'd say that this is a medium sized shoulder bag. You can fit quite a bit in here. I appreciate that beyond the magnetic flap closing, there is also a zipper on the top. I feel like that's a really overlooked detail that to me, at least makes a big difference. And that is gonna be a wrap on today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video, the vlog, the haul, running around the city. I'm so curious to know what your favorite piece that I got was. I would either say the suede over shirt or the trench coat. I think those are my top two, but I wanna know what is your favorite thing that I picked up today. Let me know in the comment section. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you guys might remember that I used to do quote of the days at the end of my video, and then I kind of tapered off on doing them. Well, I've decided to start doing something similar. Now, I thought it would be a cool thing to share journal prompts at the end. And I just thought it would be a cool thing for all of us to do together. I'm gonna do two journal prompts, one more fun, and then another one more reflective. So the first one is a more fun one. If you could spend the entire autumn season inside a world from any book, which book would it be and why? I think this one is so cool, very creative. I'm really excited to do this one myself. And our second prompt for today will be, when do you feel most connected to yourself? We're about to head into the winter months where you spend a lot of time indoors, you spend a lot of time 
with yourself right now is a really great time to strengthen that relationship with ourselves. So I think this journal prompt is like the perfect segue into that. I hope you guys like this new thing. I think it's a cool collective thing that we all can do together. And that's about it for me today. So thank you guys again for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, like I said, I will have all of the stores and shops that I visited in the description box for you guys to check out. If you have not seen it yet, I have officially started my New York City vlog. I posted my first one last week. I love it so much. I'm so proud of it. And my next one will be going live in just a couple days. So get excited. And if you're not subscribed already, I would love it if you join the family and subscribe down below. I'd love to have you here. If you'd like to keep up with me more throughout the week, you guys can find me on both TikTok and on Instagram at Jessica Neistat. I would love to see you over there. And I don't think I have any other things to share. So I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. I love and appreciate you all so, so very much. And I will catch you in my next video. Bye guys.